Jeff 911. Hi, um, I believe that there's a guy who has a gun and he just shot um, some people outside. Where? Uh, at NAU at Mountain View. It's important that students be able to engage in self-defense using the best tools that they can get and the firearm simply is the best tool for self-defense. My boyfriend shot in the neck, one is shot in the abdomen, I need an ambulance. Students for Self-Defense is a uh, group right now at ASU that advocates for the students' right to self-defense. I, I don't know, there's a bunch of people outside, I don't know who the shooter is. House Bill 2072 is a bill that would take away the Arizona Board of Regents' power to ban uh, defensive firearms on campus. No, I'm looking out my window, but there's someone on the ground, and they're in the parking lot um, on Franklin Street. I mean, this is a controversial bill. To propose to put guns back on school, to me, is a very bad idea. He shot three shots at first, two the second round, probably two minutes afterwards. Okay, is this on any campus? Yeah. It's very, uh, very loose, per se, in order to obtain a, a CCW permit. So we released that survey. We got, I want to say, around 700, uh, 700 responses. Um, about two-thirds were opposing HB 2072. I think that USG not supporting the bill represents the undergraduate population here on campus very well. Turn around! On the ground! On the ground! Just after midnight in Flagstaff, Arizona on October 9, 2015, a Northern Arizona University student shoots four other students on campus, killing one and injuring three. Six or four multiple victims. I need guardian here immediately. I'm going to need at least three or four ambulances at least. During the altercation, Stephen Jones goes to his car to retrieve his handgun and returns to the fight. I have one detained. He identified himself as a shooter. Please. Hang on. What happened that night is there were two groups of students and they got in an altercation um, off campus which resulted in a fight where one student was punched and two others were pushed down. It kind of spilled onto campus and it resulted in three people being wounded and another person dying. It was the first shooting at NAU ever in their history in 116 years. The incident brings attention to concealed carry of firearms on campus, which is currently not permitted in Arizona. However, firearms can be stored in students' vehicles on campus. The, the suspect has an explanation for why he took the actions that he did. You know, unlike a lot of the school shootings that you read about, this wasn't a case where somebody came into a classroom and just started firing blindly at people for no reason whatsoever. Um, Stephen Jones feels that he has a self-defense case and that he reacted in self-defense. Uh, the prosecutor, though, feels that he basically brought a gun to a fist fight. And so that's why you have the difference of opinion about whether this is self-defense or whether this is murder. Tell ASU how you would defend yourself on campus and get a free $50 lift credit. Four months following the NAU shooting, Arizona State University students in Tempe are informing other students on current statewide higher education self-defense policies on campus. So we're with uh, Students for Self-Defense, uh, which is a new club on ASU campus advocating for uh, self-defense on ASU campus. Uh, we're doing an event where we're looking at uh, which form of self-defense students would choose to use if they were legal. All of these forms of self-defense are not allowed on ASU campus and that's something we're trying to change. The club has been around for about six months now. We're pretty, uh, pretty new. We're very motivated to do what we're doing because we believe that self-defense is a uh, human right. We also believe that it's very important for students to be able to, uh, to protect themselves on campus should anything dangerous happen to them. How you doing? So what, what is this exactly? So all of these methods of self-defense are currently uh, not allowed on ASU campus. And we're trying to find out if, uh, if they were, which one would you use? Uh, I would use mixed martial arts. Think so? 
That's, that's the only method of self-defense that we're aware of that's not, uh, not banned on campus. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, I imagine you've been training that for quite a while, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people who aren't, uh, that's not necessarily the best, best option. Right. I mean, if, if I wasn't really trained, probably, I would probably use a firearm. We should allow uh, guns on campus, but you know, there has to be some sort of uh, particular training you have to take in order to, in, in order to carry that gun so that, so that we can ensure everybody's safety, that they know how to use that gun. Some people don't know how to use a firearm or they don't know the, the kick of the gun. So, I mean, there's a lot of factors that, that can, um, you know, affect the shooter if they didn't even know how to use the gun in the first place. This booth really brings attention to the issue because it's not really talked about here. It's kind of like taboo. Students should be able to carry firearms with the proper training. I don't necessarily feel safe on campus because while I can't carry even though I've had training and done six years in the military, it just doesn't make sense to why I can go to the grocery store and be able to conceal carry, but I can't come to where I spend the most time and defend myself. I nominate Kevin. Yeah, I'd like to nominate this awful passion about this. Students for Self-Defense at ASU are strengthening the infrastructure within their organization by electing board members and discussing future goals. We decided that uh, Students for Self-Defense needed a uh, board to, to vote on decisions and sort of get people more involved and make everything more official. We wanted to incorporate as an organization in Arizona and uh, kind of create a, uh, a foundation to start other chapters in the state. So what we wanted to do today is get together with the members and come up with some plans for the future as to what kind of events we're going to do and things like that. and. Um, also to uh, decide who the, uh, the dedicated members were going to be and the people that wanted to lead the group in the future. We're the only group on campus right now that's encouraging students to think critically about the issue of self-defense and reject the sort of scared, simple thinking that can potentially lead to tragedy on uh, college campuses. Uh, what we're suggesting to people is that you can't create uh, the world that you want through policy alone. You have to allow people to, uh, you have to allow people to protect themselves. You have to have realistic expectations of, uh, you know, how things are going to go on campus and you should adjust your safety policy to meet the needs of the student body, not try to shape the student body to meet your, uh, your safety needs. Just our board, guys. Myself, Jacob, Naomi, uh, Kevin and Ivan are the board members for Students for Self-Defense as of now. As the organization rallies to support self-defense on campus, they find a new cornerstone for their cause when Arizona Representative Sonny Borelli introduces House Bill 2072. House Bill 2072 is a bill that would take away the Arizona Board of Regents' power to ban uh, defensive firearms on campus. What it would do is um, allow all students and faculty on the public campuses in Arizona who do have a concealed carry permit and who have registered themselves with the school to carry a concealed, a concealed weapon on campus. Uh, I didn't see a lot of details in the bill itself on how that process would be carried out, but from what I understand you have to have a CCW permit and you have to have an additional level of licensing from the university and then, and then you would, as a faculty member or a student, you'd be allowed to have a concealed carry weapons permit on campus. While Students for Self-Defense at ASU supports this bill, others remain skeptical of the sponsor's intentions for proposing it. The gun lobbyists and certain members of the Republican caucus literally lay around during the interim when we're not in session, and they're trying to think of ways that they can run more gun bills because they want to you know, get a higher score for the NRA for when they're out campaigning or, or something like that. If you're only running bills so that you can tell people that you ran these bills, if you're just trying to drive up a, a rating score with some type of metric on, on the campaign side or something, I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that and I don't like that at all. And unfortunately, a lot of the gun bills fall in that category. In order to gauge student support for the bill, the undergraduate student government body created a survey that ensured accurate collection of students' opinions of guns on campus. We got, I want to say around 700 
uh, 700 responses. Um, about two thirds were opposing HB 2072, and then just under a third supported HB 2072 from that sample size. The survey summarized the current weapon policies on campus in addition to a brief summary of what House Bill 2072 proposes. They also surveyed the Program Activities Board and the Residence Hall Association to determine their stances on the bill. The Residence Hall Association voted on behalf of all the residents on campus. We have just short of 10,000 students on campus who live on campus. There were four delegates representing their respective residence halls who voted to support HB 2072. And there were about 23 or 24 delegates who voted to oppose HB 2072. And there was no one who abstained. To me, that says it seems like a majority of the student body here at the Tempe campus opposes HB 2072. After the Arizona Board of Regents and the Tempe Campus USG voted in opposition of the bill, the downtown Phoenix Campus USG is now voting on the bill. On to Senate Resolution 27, is there a motion to discuss? So Senate Resolution 27 expresses a support for House Bills 2027 20, and House Bills 2338. But clarity is lacking regarding the so. details of the bill and CCW requirements. Um, I see no reason to uh, pass this because if this is a war's jurisdiction, there's no reason for the state to go against it and say something completely different. The state could sort of impose its will upon the schools, and you've seen a trend nationally of state legislatures that are trying to impose their will upon cities and schools. This personally, I think, is a bad idea. Uh, let cities craft their own laws and let the schools decide for themselves what's best for them. Other concerns that students have are that it will increase uh, the number of suicides or that students who are drinking might be more likely to get violent. Uh, I can definitely understand where these concerns are coming from. They're concerns that we have to some degree as well. But when we look at the actual t statistics on colleges that have allowed concealed carry, we find that uh, there is not any increase in violence that is predicted. While Students for Self-Defense at ASU may be the only ASU organization supporting concealed carry on campus, organizations such as Students for Concealed Carry are keeping the debate open at the national level as well. States that allow varied forms of concealed carry on campus as of January 2016 include Colorado, Idaho, Mississippi, Oregon, Utah, and Wisconsin, with Texas and Kansas having passed legislation to implement the policy in the near future. According to the National Conference of State Legislators, every state allows concealed carry of weapons in some way if citizens abide by the respective state requirements. Furthermore, Students for Concealed Carry reports that there is no evidence that licensed concealed carry leads to an increase in either violent crimes or gun deaths. Most states also have laws prohibiting the carrying of firearms under the influence of either drugs or alcohol. Allowing concealed carry on college campuses would have no impact on the laws regulating concealed carry at bars and off-campus parties. How much should we look at other states for examples, for ideas, for leadership? You know, if another state has tackled something, you know, maybe a form of commerce in an industry that's going very well, these other states that are doing policy that's different from us, what are the, the results that they're getting? What does the fallout look like? Are, the, are they tied up in courts? Riley, you're next. Um, I just want to address the comment about the suicide rates. Um, so I was a little confused. Are you saying that having the guns on campus would make students anxious about it and like that would cause suicide? Are you saying that the guns on campus would like lead to suicide? Because they have a gun. Okay. Someone has a concealed weapon that would cause stress to our students. Okay. That was it. In those contexts, let's say person A has a CCW permit, person B is their roommate person B gets intoxicated, that can be a huge problem if person B knows how to get a hold of person A's stuff. But that's not the chief concern with which people were kind of coming with this. Another major one, and I think this one is far more relevant, is the one concerning students battling anxiety and depression who may have access to a firearm or, or who may have quicker access to a firearm as a result of legal implications. Whether you are trained to use a firearm or not, in the case of a high-stress situation, if you are not trained to act in a high-stress situation, you will not, you do not really know how you are going to react. Whether it is um, fight or flight, so either you're going to stand your ground or you're going to run. We have law enforcement for that reason. We have protection. We have things that um, on our campus for measures to protect our students. I feel like.
As some express, the police forces are adequate to protect students during emergency situations. Others doubt the effectiveness of police due to the length of response times. The average police response time is uh, at the very least 10 minutes, sometimes much longer. Um, and that's way too long for a student who's in a bad situation to have to wait. This is assuming the student can even contact the police at all. If they're in a particularly violent situation, if they're being attacked, they may not be able to, to get their phone out and call the police or make it to um, one of the pylons that allow students to alert the officials. So those are some of the concerns we have with the official response. I always use this scenario. The mass shootings that we recently have had, police show up and the only description they have is we have a shooter on campus and this is what they have. So let's say now you have a gun, the police show up, they see bodies, who do you think they're going to target? We know who they're going to target. We see this person holding a gun, they're going to shoot the person holding the gun and then they'll ask questions later and the person that's carrying the gun might be the one that was trying to defend. In this legislation, is there a, like a certain group of people that can carry guns on campus, or is it like just general public? It's anyone with a concealed carry. Like okay, so it's basically. Okay, that was my question. Okay. Uh, so I think another part of that is that it probably will affect the learning environment. Is that when you walk into a library and you see you sit down to somebody and like you look down and there's a gun on their poster, like that would make me very uncomfortable sitting next to that person. And it's one thing to think about, and then also the use of guns. This is allowing guns on campus, but there isn't really like thought about like the use. Um, are there going to be like shooting ranges on campus? Are they just allowed to have guns, or just carry them? Can you pull them out in public and like take the safety off? Like, what does that really entail having a gun? Uh, Riley. Um, so it's concealed carry license. People that have concealed carry license are trained to use a gun. It's a really intensive process. Um, they're trained to use a gun. Like Marianne said, um, how people respond in situations like these, um, you're not gonna know until the event happens. So it's, you can't just assume either way that they're gonna know how to use it or that they're not going to know how to use it, but they are well trained. And it is a concealed carry, so you wouldn't see that the person next to you is carrying a gun because it would be concealed. You go through the training once, you go through a certification process, uh, which is very minimal at the, at the least. You attend a class or some other kind of training, and then you can carry a gun and an incident occurs. You're not trained to react. The bigger question that we're talking about is, should firearms be on campus? And if the answer is no, then we shouldn't even be discussing about what standards should be met or what credentials or merits uh, we should use to evaluate putting guns on campus. I'm in the, the, the large camp, the overwhelming majority, I think, of people who don't want firearms on campus ever. Arizona State University is in my district. So my district is very college-centric. And I'll tell you, I went to Arizona State University myself. I don't know of a single scenario where you could say, I think having guns in the room would have made something better. All those in favor of passing Senate Resolution 27 for the support of House Bills 27 to 2072 and House Bills 2338 say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Okay, this bill does not pass. Senate Resolution 27 does not pass. Moving on to. Shooters! Slow fire, five rounds, center of mass! At C2 Tactical in Mesa, Arizona, students are pursuing CCW permits through a seven hour weekend training class. Fire! The class that we offer here is approximately seven hours long. Uh, you go through a basic firearm safety brief before we take you on the range and you're required to qualify by shooting five rounds at 15 feet, five rounds at 30 feet, and then the rest of the afternoon is spent learning law and legal, where you can or can't go, what you can or cannot do with your firearm, and the legal consequences of using your firearm in a self-defense situation. There are no state requirements on the instructor certification other than they are an NRA certified firearms instructor. There is no uh, course description uh, by the state. There's no course content uh, any longer given by the state. So it's up to each individual facility on the course content and what you're and and uh, what the shooter is going to do. Up until about a year ago there was uh, 
a problem with people trying to go online and shop via the internet to get a basic firearm safety certificate. It had to do with the wording of the law. We've since changed that, so going online and getting a basic firearm certificate is no longer valid and not recognized by the state. Uh, that's number one. Number two, there is no 30-minute process. Every person that applies for a concealed carry weapons permit in our state uh, has to go through a federal background check, which requires it goes through five separate systems of the federal government to include any prior drug convictions, weapons violations, or any other felony conviction. Any misdemeanor acts of domestic violence, there's a whole slew of things that they're looking for, and if anything, any of those things pop up, you're going to be prohibited from applying for that permit. What I think the biggest misconception about a concealed carry weapons permit in our state is, is that a lot of people think that it is a permit to shoot, a permit to draw, a permit to do whatever you want, and it's not. Uh, it's extremely strict on who actually gets a CCW, whether regardless of what class, what training you've ever attended, they're still going to go entirely through your background. It takes approximately uh, two months for them to go through this background check before they'll issue you your permit. Once you actually have your permit, with or without that permit, everyone has to adhere to the exact same laws about when and where you're allowed to use your firearm for self-defense. looking for is that they can keep all their shots inside that nine box right there and obviously this is a much smaller silhouette than the average size person so self-defense shootings happen within 16 feet most arguments of course take place at this distance right here uh -huh. so true self-defense shootings and what we train for in our more advanced classes look like this Normally, if you're shooting regular range pointed ammunition, it travels straight through so it doesn't slow down, it doesn't uh, release enough energy. So our goal or our purpose is to try and stop the threat. And the way that we do that is proper hits on center mass with expansive ammunition that will cause a uh, greater shock wave to take place. So we're hoping to knock the wind out of them and set them down. In this particular scenario, we're assuming that this person may already have a gun out or maybe has a knife out. They're presenting us with a deadly threat. So this lead hand could just as easily be used to deflect whatever firearm, knife, whatever thing it is that they have in their hand and still allow me to retrieve my firearm where they can't get a hold of it. Notice I've removed it from that workspace. Right here, they might be able to grab it. They might try to struggle with me for it. But once I deflect and I get this step back, now I've removed it from that area. And I can shoot straight from here to get my initial hits on target. If they continue to attack me, I can keep up my retreat and keep aiming for center mass to stop the threat until he stops trying to attack me. Following heavy resistance from the community, House Bill 2072 failed to reach the Arizona House of Representatives floor for consideration. Various sponsors of the bill could either not be reached or decline to comment on their support of the bill and why it was dropped. If we pass bills here and become into law and has a uh, wrong impact on our communities, such as CCWs on the campuses, and if an incident does occur and does happen, then we should be the ones held accountable for allowing or not allowing this to happen. Maybe they don't want to talk about, you know, violence. Maybe they don't want to talk about the predicted, or should I say foreseeable, fallout, controversy, violence, problems with passing this bill. I mean, this is a controversial bill. To propose to put guns back on school, to me, is a very bad idea. With the introduction of House Bill 2072, a door was opened for both those supporting and opposing concealed carry on campus, allowing both parties to become more informed on what it would take to allow the carrying of firearms on college campuses. With this comes an opportunity for future discussions and better informed decisions regarding controversial policy issues. The supporters of guns will say that um, had Stephen Jones not had a gun that night, 
they feel that he could have been seriously hurt had he not had that protection. Um, the opponents will say, you know, here's what happens when someone's allowed to have a gun is, you know, what probably would have been a fist fight turned into something far worse because there was a gun involved. Very often people are concerned with guns in themselves and feel uneasy around them. And as a result, they don't want them on college campuses. That's where the other kind of relevant points come in of students supporting HB 2072 where they say, well, listen, like maybe we can just get over this, this negative sentiment that we have or this, this negative gut reaction that we have because when we look at this, like this piece of data and this piece of data, it seems like we have a compelling reason to grant people um, or to allow for people to exercise their rights in a law-abiding way. And then also you get the constitutional argument, right? Second Amendment, why should, why should the government stop me from exercising my Second Amendment right? Why, why should any form of government stop me from exercising my Second Amendment right? So those are, I think, some of the main points, both that get brought up in the national gun debate and then also that I think there are plenty of students here at ASU Tempe who espouse those views. Despite banning guns on num numerous campuses, the mass shootings aren't really stopping. I think people are starting to realize that these sorts of laws aren't doing what they, uh, they say they will do. Um, the political winds seem to be shifting, and I think that if such a bill is ever going to be passed in Arizona, now is the time.